Hey everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at how to handle audio in Foundry VTT. So let's get right into it. Uh, over here in the right hand sidebar, we've got our audio playlist section, which is third from the right uh, with this little music icon. And we see already that we've got some settings we can consider. We've got global volume controls, which cover playlist, ambient, and interface. Now these are three different kind of sources for sounds in Foundry uh, that you can control kind of their max volume of. So let's take a look at what each type of sound is and that should help clarify it a little bit. So first off, playlists are uh, created in this sidebar uh, with the create playlist button and this slider will control their kind of max volume relative to the ambient and the interface sound. Now, what are the ambient and the interface sounds? Uh, ambient sounds are actually sounds that we've made over here in the left hand sidebar using the ambient sound controls option. This works a lot like how lighting works in Foundry VTT in that you can drag out a circular uh, selection and it will be blocked by walls, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. So if I release this, uh, we can see that we have two sound types, local and global. So if I change this to global, it will ignore walls and it will play everywhere, just like global light. Uh, and we also have some other options that we'll get to in a second, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and close this. So this is our, uh, these are sound effects that if your player were to move into them, they would uh, hear sound effects uh, just defined within that area, which is really cool. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and close this right now. Uh, that'll go away and we can look at what interface audio is. And those are sound effects that uh, your players might make by interacting with something in Foundry VTT, like coming up to the door lock, uh, a door that's locked and clicking on it and you get that sound effect so you can control its maximum volume as well. And it's by default a little bit lower than the others because normally the ambiance and the playlist music is a little bit more uh, important and a little bit more forward. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at creating our first playlist and see how kind of all these sound files interact with each other. So we can create a playlist and I'm gonna name this one Suspense, or actually no, Spooky is a better fit. And we see already that we've got an option for shuffle tracks. Uh, this will shuffle all of the tracks. Uh, so we can hit create playlist. We have an empty playlist now, and we have this edit option where we can edit the playlist that we just created. We can hit add sound. We can delete the playlist entirely. We can change the playback method of the playlist, or we can just play the playlist. So the playback methods are actually more than just sequential and shuffle as you might think. So there's sequential playback where it plays everything in order. There is shuffle tracks where it plays things in a random order. But if we click again, we can see that we've got simultaneous playback. So if you've got a playlist where it's four sounds mixed with an occasional bird that cause that also has occasional pitter patter of footsteps or something like that. And you want to play all of them at once uh, when a scene starts, you can do that, which is really cool. Uh, and then we also have this soundboard only option, which basically disables the play button over here. So you can't accidentally play everything all at once or, or anything like that. And you can just go to the individual tracks and hit play. Uh, so let's actually change this back to sequential order uh, or shuffle because that's fine because this is just going to be a collection of spooky music that can play whenever we need a spooky feel. So let's go ahead and add our first track. We're going to name this one Spooky Ambiance. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to use this actual naming scheme, but uh, let's actually also quickly look at how I have my audio files set up. Uh, we're at the root of the user data right now where it's got your world systems and modules folder. I went in and added my own audio folder uh, in a music and sound effects subfolders. I probably shouldn't have capitalized them uh, to keep consistent with the rest of the system, but it's a little too late now. But uh, I'll come into music. I'm going to select my spooky ambiance. I'm going to hit select file, though if you hadn't already uploaded yours, you could always use the choose file and upload there. We'll hit select file. And I'm going to come in and increase the volume of the spooky ambience because in my testing, it was a little bit quiet. Um, and then we can also set it to repeat. And since uh, I don't have additional songs in this playlist right now for it to kind of go between smoothly, I'm going to set it to repeat. But if you had multiple songs, uh, it would probably be worth not having repeat on. So I'm going to hit update track and 
Now that we have a sound file in here, you might remember from the map making video, or not map making video, map adding video, uh, that over in the scene directory, if you double click on the scene, you get the scene configuration tool, and there was an audio playlist option. And I can come in and I can select Spooky to be the playlist for this scene. So when I activate it, this playlist will automatically start. I'll hit Save Changes. And you can hear actually that it has already started. So I'm actually going to go in and remove it so there's not a creepy uh, ghost wailing undertone to the rest of this video. Uh, and I'm going to come back to the music section. And so we can select uh, track volume here if we need to update that ourselves. We can change whether or not the sound loops when it's done. This is it off and this is with it on. We can also come in and edit the track and have access to basically the same functionality. Uh, but you could always rename the track if you needed to. So now that we have this first playlist, let's take a look at what it sounds like or what goes into making these ambient sounds. And for that, I'll use an example over here. We've got this barn, and we'll say that there's a horse right in this region. Uh, and you can see that the walls are interacting with the sound file and blocking them. I'm going to drag this out. This seems like probably a reasonable distance that you'd be able to hear uh, a horse at. And I'm going to leave it as local. If I changed it to global, it would ignore the walls and go everywhere. But I don't really want the horse whinnying sound to be over here in the main ballroom. So I'm going to leave this as local. We can go in and set our audio source. I'm going to jump back up one directory and into my sound effects folder where I have horsewhinny.wav. I'm going to hit select. Uh, it has already selected the X and Y position because I dragged it out. Uh, we can change the radius of the... Uh, of the effect to make it uh, bigger or smaller. And then we also have this super useful uh, functionality called volume easing. So what volume easing does is the farther at the edge your player characters are, the quieter the music will be. And the more, uh, the closer they get to the center of the sound, the louder it'll be. And I, I love this. So I'm going to go ahead and set volume easing to be on because uh, as you get closer to a horse, it's going to be louder. I'm going to set it to be a little bit louder, so we're definitely going to be able to hear it in the recording. Uh, and I'm going to hit Save Sound. And let me change back into the character, and we can see what this sounds like. We can hear the winning start. And there it is getting louder and quieter as we move in and out of its range. Uh, and so that's the basics of how ambient sound works. And we've kind of already gotten an example of interface sound. But let's take a look at putting together a soundboard, because that'll be uh, pretty useful too. So we'll call this one soundboard. I'm not going to check shuffle tracks. I'm going to hit Create Playlist. I'm actually going to come in here and change this to be the soundboard only option. This isn't necessary. Uh, but it is useful so you don't accidentally uh, butterfinger and, and play a huge collection of, of sound effects all at once or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to go in and hit Add Sound. And let's see which track we're going to add. We'll do uh, the Weapon Impact. That's a good one. Hit Select. And I'm going to make this a nice space. And we'll say... Weapon Impact, save. I'm going to increase the volume. And you see that if I click here, I can't automatically play them all. Uh, let's add another one. We'll do the Spooky Sting. And click and select that. Get it added in. Increase the volume for that as well. Hit Update Track. And this would be useful in a situation where you were running combat or something like that. And to add to some of your descriptions, you wanted to have some sound effects. So if you say, oh, Mac, as you swing your war hammer forward and you connect with uh, the armor of the creature in front of you, you can go ahead and hit that. And he blocks it with his sword and, and knocks you to the side or something like that. Uh, or if you have a situation where they're moving into a position with a ghost and maybe the ghost attempts to make a possession or something like that, if it's successful, you can punctuate your description with this creepy sound effect that hopefully adds a little bit more gravitas to the situation. Uh, and you just you just can keep adding more and more things to your soundboard. 
Uh, you can split the soundboard up into different playlists. So you could have like combat soundboard, uh, tavern soundboard, uh, where dice get rolled or something when they're playing a game with a bunch of tavern people or something like that. Uh, there's a lot of different options for it. And you can always minimize these so that they take up less space and you can get a, a closer look at what options you have. I'll go ahead and maximize them back out. Um, but one other thing to keep in mind is that if you are using this while you're running combat, if you right click on the audio playlist, just like the combat tracker, it'll pop out to the side and you can pull it over here and you can have quick access to your soundboard or to any other uh, sounds that you need. Uh, and you could have your combat tracker up here, keep everything in a nice line. Uh, and you've got an awesome way to add some additional uh, spectacle to your fights. But let's actually go back and take a look at adding sound to a couple other places in this map, just so that we get a better feel for how things can interact with each other all at once. So if I come back to audio uh, over here on the left hand side, actually for ambient sound controls, uh, my plan for this encounter specifically was, and if Kyle, you're, if you're watching this, because I know you've gotten into Foundry recently, do not keep watching because it has spoilers for the campaign, uh, to have a band up here on this stage. And I'm going to draw out the uh, sound effect of where they're going to be playing. And I'm going to come into my audio sources, back to music. And I'm going to select uh, Waltz of the Flowers by Tchaikovsky because it is uh, free to use and in YouTube's audio library. Uh, I'm actually going to use something different uh, for the actual game, but uh, that's okay. So I'm going to hit update. Um, going to increase the volume for it a little bit. I'm going to turn on volume easing because the closer you get to the band, obviously the louder it's going to be. Let's go ahead and hit save sound. I'm actually going to move this a little bit more central. There we go. And you see that the walls are interacting with it as expected. So no sound is leaking through. Uh, and if I go ahead and I, oh, still on the audio tool. Let me change back to the basic controls. And I bring uh, a player character in here. We hear the music lightly. And the closer we get to the center, the louder it is, and it's all working exactly as expected. Um, so let me come back out a little bit and we can look at adding another couple of ambient sounds. We'll just add one here. And this one's going to be in the sound effects. And we'll say that we've got this uh, fountain sound effect and we're gonna hit save pull that there and you can actually copy and paste these as well. So I'm just going to do that. Uh, so our players will be able to hear the fountains as they start moving through the map. Um, and then if we wanted to add additional uh, sound effects, we could come up and do a new playlist for, let's say, weather effects. We'll hit, uh, and this could actually be more specific weather effects like rain. So you could have a mixture of rain sounds, thunder sounds, uh, yada, 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 but I'm just going to call it weather effects for right now. Uh, and hit add, we'll name it heavy rain. One of the first quick time event video games, if I recall correctly. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, we can select heavy rain dot wav, uh, hit select file, increase the volume for it. And I'll go ahead and hit repeat track here since it's the only one that I have in there and I want it to keep going. I'm actually going to turn it down a little bit. I think this was one of the louder files that I had. I'll hit update track. And so now uh, my thought is when this map first loads, I'll have the spooky track going. And depending on what's happened recently in the game, if I need to add a little bit more effect to it, I might come in and pop on heavy rain. Yeah, that is one of the louder effects, at least in my ears so I'm going to drop that down a little bit it might not be as loud in the game but you can hear that these sound effects are starting to layer on top of each other uh, and you can still have all of your soundboard sounds going like a weapon impact or you can have your player still hearing the music uh, and we'll move up a little closer and this song isn't always particularly loud, so I might actually come over and drop the volume on these so we can hear this as well. And actually, let me 
just click into it and I'll raise its volume up to max. And then we can have the rain a little bit louder and the spooky ambiance still going. And there we go. Now we have a little bit of the music coming in. Uh, we have the spooky ambiance going. We have the heavy rain effect going and everything is great. And so if they were also in combat, we could start throwing in spooky stings and all that good stuff weapon impacts uh and hopefully that should add uh some interesting aspects to your games uh one last note actually is that all of the sound files that i use in this video other than tchaikovsky's waltz of the flowers are uh, available for free to use commercially uh without attribution all that good stuff uh there's a company called sonus i think they're sonus.com if you check uh, Google for Sonus GDC, you can find that for, I think since like 2016 or something like that, they've yearly for GDC, the Game Developer Conference, been releasing these fully sound files and, and music files and, and stings and things like that. I actually found it originally because I was making short films and I needed sound effects for those, but it works just as well for D&D. Uh, so be sure to check that out. The one thing I would uh, warn you against is that all of these sound files have to be transferred out to all of your players. And uh, since they're designed to go into games and things like that, they're uncompressed because they anticipate you compressing them when the game is about to release or be published. Um, and so if you have a 20 megabyte uh, ghost sound and a 30 megabyte uh, ambience going on and things like that, uh, that, that quickly gets to be very large file sizes like that alone would be 50 and if you have four players you've got to transfer it four times suddenly you have 200 megabytes that you're starting to move between uh, everybody off of your home connection or off of a VPS or whatever you're running uh, Foundry on and that can get pretty heavy so I would definitely recommend re-rendering them or anything like that to uh, to make sure that you're delivering reasonable sounds to your players and one other thing to keep in mind is that I already opened up another scene over here, but if you come up to a scene that you're about to open and you hit preload, it will start transferring those things before you actually get to the scene. So when you hit activate, hopefully everything will already be loaded. So if you have a slower internet connection, uh, I would definitely recommend taking a look at that and, and utilize, utilizing that functionality. Um, and uh, other than that, that should cover pretty much everything for audio, I hope. Um, Unfortunately, I have a little bit of bad news. The next video probably will not be macros. I know everybody was asking about it, but it has turned out to be uh, more of a monster than I thought that it was going to be originally. Uh, and it keeps almost evolving into a programming tutorial, which I don't really want to do. Um, but the, as you all know, the documentation for it is a little sparse and uh, the community macros are not necessarily as numerous as I had anticipated based on other things that I'd seen. Um, and that's no knock on the community members whatsoever. These are people making free things to make this game better and, and more useful for all of us. And a lot of the macros exist already, but they're in the Discord and they have to actually be moved over to the community wiki. So I'm trying to document those things and make notes and, and try to put things in as easy of a term as I can think of to do. Um, but uh, it's not going to be ready in, in the near immediate future. It's just because it's more than I, more than I anticipated. Uh, but I do have some awesome content coming up on uh, some of the amazing modules for Foundry uh, that I think y'all are going to really like. And I'm also working on something for rollable tables so you can determine what magic items your players find after an unanticipated fight or, or, or loot or number of gold, silver, and copper or whatever, or what table you should roll. You can roll for a table. Um, and all that good stuff. So hopefully there will be some other interesting stuff. I'm still working on macros, but it might be a little bit uh, I'll try to have it out as soon as possible, but thank you all so much for watching, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.